वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल लुकिंग एट इम्पोर्टेंट हेडलाइन फ्रॉम द हिंदू न्यूज पेपर फॉर सेकेंड फेब संडे सो द बजट हैज बीन अनाउंस सो हर आर द की इम्पोर्टेंट अनाउंसमेंट इन द बजट यू कैन सी एल आई सी आई पी ओ इनिशियल पब्लिक ऑफरिंग विल लीड डिस इन्वेस्टमेंट ट्रस्ट एंड जनरेट रेवेन्यू फॉर द गवर्नमेंट अनदर वन इज रिगार्डिंग फिजिकल कंसॉलिडेशन so challenges to fiscal consolidation will be there because growth is slowing now so government cannot maintain the fiscal deficit target to and sensex unimpressed sensex you can see sensex went down so these are the in, inside news which is detailed out here for taxation the new taxation structure is announced we'll see that inside in social sector also steps will be taken to enable sourcing external commercial borrowings in fdi in higher education so viability gap funding will be provided even to hospitals in public private partnership mode under ayushman bharat and under infrastructure the railways to set up kisan rail through public private partnership and tejas type trains will connect major tourist destinations even delhi mumbai expressway is uh, proposed to be completed by 2023 so you will be so it says finance minister offers opt in income tax scheme to boost demand so rates will be reduced for those giving up exemptions so if exemptions are given up then taxation rates are reduced so that is what has been announced so there are various exemptions deductions which are allowed under under the taxation scheme so here you can see this is a comparison between old and new tax slabs so old tax slabs up to 5 lakh there is no taxation that stays even in the new system and then from 5 to 7.5 so there are further slabs brought out you can see so 10% 15% 20 25 and 30% are the taxation rates in the new taxation structure the old taxation structure will continue to exist means both the structures would be there and an individual has to decide decide under which taxation scheme do they want to pay taxes so earlier it was 5 to 10 lakh 20% in uh, taxation and 10 lakh up it is 30% taxation so that were the two slabs but now there are five slabs you can see which have been announced and this new taxation scheme will be used by those who are not going to take up any exemptions so here you can see up to 5 lakh is new then you can see if you take the if you take into account everything that you can see there is 12500 rebate for income up to 5 lakh rupees then you know so then from uh, then other is 4% in health and education says this applies to all slabs so it, if it if you say 10% it becomes 10.4% so this is detailed out here the effective rates and the existing tax rates and the new taxation system so income and what is your savings so depending on your saving well, this how much will you pay as tax in the old regime and in the new regime is given so in if you are investing so on the investments then uh, you know standard deductions are allowed Means since your money is invested or something you need not pay on that amount so those deductions and exemptions will not be there in the new regime so that's the idea but the taxation rate is low and below you have man opens fire in the air at shinba so for the second time in 3 days a man opened fire near the site of ndca protests in the capital this man kapil gujjar is not a juvenile now he's 25 and he declared that only the voice of hindus would count in the country as he was as such so he was shouting through hindu slogans so here you can see regarding taxation it is said in the budget speech it was said currently there are more than 100 exemptions and deductions under the income tax act so 70 of them have been removed in the new simplified regime so in, in, you know, exemptions and deductions will not be there then this is no more double taxation on dividends so center has removed 15% tax plus applicable surcharge and cess on dividends which is currently paid by companies so this has been the long standing demand of the capital market so because uh, dividend distribution tax has been scrapped so it is levied on companies so dividend will now be taxed only in the hands of the investors not on the company 
because it is double taxation when the company giving gives dividend you are taxing and when a person gets income that is also being taxed so dividend distribution tax has been scrapped below you have affordable housing gets a leg up but real reality bites for realty sector so you can see for for tax holiday means that the extension of tax holiday has taken place means what is it is that uh, tax holiday is provided on profits earned by developers of affordable housing projects as such so this tax holiday was uh, approved up to 31st march 2020 so now it will be extended the date of approvals of such projects for availing tax holiday has been extended by one more year it will go until 31st march 2021 but the exemptions in the new tax regime for home loans has been withdrawn so under new taxation regime the home loan exemptions are not there so that we already discussed and this is steep increase in custom duty to keep chinese toys out of reach so custom duty on a range of articles like household goods electrical appliances auto parts footwear furniture mobile phone parts have been raised in the union budget and it said that the move is to keep con uncontrolled dumping under check, protect the interests of micro, small, and medium enterprises, and facilitate ease of doing business. So here you can see for various um, what are the existing uh, various items, what are the existing custom duty rates, and how much is being proposed now under the new new regime. So you can see for shelled walnuts, 30% custom duty was there. Now it is 100%. Footwear, it was 25% custom duty, now it is 35%. Toys, 20% custom duty has become 60%. Solar cells have been brought down from 20% to 0. So that is it. Even completely built commercial vehicles will be taxed at 40%. Then on page 10, here you have the income tax you know, growth uh, as a percentage of uh, gross tax revenues you can see how it was indirect tax which was at number one then came income tax and corporate tax but now you can see corporate tax has increased but it is the lowest income indirect taxation share has reduced and income tax percentage as such has increased then here you have States tax share to stay at 42 percent. So, 15 Finance Commission will continue formula set by the predecessor. So, it has it's in its interim remote report in the parliament has recommended maintaining state share in the divisible pool of tax collections at virtually the same level of 42 percent. So, this is regarding the 15th Finance Commission, it has submitted an interim report. This is independent of the budget, and this is. Finance Minister proposes taxpayers' charter to boost trust. So, Income Tax Act will include taxpayers' rights also now. So, a new taxpayers' charter aimed at boosting trust between citizens and authorities in order to improve efficiency of tax administration has been proposed. So, taxpayers' charter. So, this is proposed. Even steps to smoothen income tax administration are important. On page 4, you have, this is regarding how the Sensex fell at the end of the day after the budget presentation. So, uh, another proposal is to set up an investment clearance cell. So, it will provide end-to-end -end facilitation and support including advisory information on land banks. So, this is investment clearance cell proposed. And here you can see insurance cover on deposits has been raised to 5 lakh. So, government has decided to increase the insurance cover from bank for bank deposits which was at 1 lakh. So, now it will be 5 lakh. So, this is the first time since 1993 that this deposit insurance cover has been raised. So, this is it. So, this is under the Deposit Insurance and Credit Guarantee Corporation. So, it has been permitted to increase the deposit insurance coverage for depositors means if anything happens to your account if you're not able to withdraw the money whatever be the amount in your bank in your in your account uh, only one lakh is what you're entitled to. so now that one lakh insurance for deposit is increased to five lakh so this uh, uh, Punjab and Maharashtra bank fiasco happened 
and people are not able to withdraw money. So that is also fresh in the minds. Then you have government to sell part of its stake in LIC via IPO. So initial public offering would be announced for LIC. So it will be the biggest firm as such uh, with, which will be listed now. And it says even at 10% dilution, it will be difficult for the market to absorb at one go. And government may look at doing this in lots is what an analyst or an economic analyst says. An IPO will be announced. You can see government has set up a target to raise 2.1 lakh crore through disinvestment in 2020-2021. So earlier target was of 1.5 lakh crores in the current financial and now it wants to raise 2.1 lakh crores. So it says if listed LIC has to be more transparent in disclosure and it will have to make quarterly disclosures in the stock market about their perform financial performance. And there are protests against LIC stake disinvestment. Employees describe it as a move which is against the national interest. Then this is government moves cut in withholding tax. So here you can see finance minister proposes uh, proposes uh, that the withholding tax would be cut to boost listing of bonds on IFSC exchange. So here you can see withholding tax rate which is there is of 5%. So this will be reduced to 4% is what the government has proposed. So this is on interest payment on bonds listed on the stocks. So when you have on a stock exchange you have bonds listed. So, for the amount which is there, you pay a tax. So, that is called withholding tax. So, that is at a rate of 5%, which will now be reduced to 4%. So, this move is to attract more international investors to IFSC exchange. So, the IFSC is International Financial Services Center, which is at Gift City near Ahmedabad in Gujarat. So, this was the first IFSC established in India. And this is international bullion exchange to be set up at IFSC. So government has proposed to set up an international bullion exchange at IFSC in Gift City, which will lead to better price discovery of gold, create more jobs and enhance India's position in the market. So this has also been announced in the budget. The, so the only international financial services center which India has is presently at Gift City near Ahmedabad in Gujarat. Then on page 5 you have the limit for foreign portfolio investors in corporate bonds which is currently at 9% of outstanding stock will be increased to 15%. Means FPIs are also being welcome but these are investments in bonds in stocks. So foreign investors can anytime move out which will result in a shocker for the stocks. So but now government has allowed the limit is increased from 9% to 15%. And here this is a figure on automobile sales in the year 2019-20. You can see how private vehicle sales, passenger vehicle sales has been doing, how commercial vehicle sales has been doing and this is about two wheelers. So what has gone up is actually passenger vehicles. Two wheelers are down as well as commercial vehicles. Then, this is e-commerce platforms must deduct 1% TDS on deals. So, finance minister says this is an initiative to widen the tax base. So, now e-commerce e firms like you know Amazon, Flipkart, etc. will have to pay 1% tax deduction at source. 1% TDS when they have deals struck on all payments or credits on credits to e-commerce participants. So, it has that 1%. So if there is PAN and Aadhaar, then it is 1%. If there is no PAN Aadhaar, then it should be 5% TDS. Then this is 5-year long national infrastructure pipeline with a total budget outlay of 102.5 lakh crore. So it was announced in the last budget. So this is the second year. And this ambitious plan is getting bogged down by time delays and cost overruns across many projects. So this complete coverage is given here on various sectors where how they are faring, time and cost overruns. 
then below you have to give a boost to startup ecosystem budget proposes to defer tax payment on esops that is uh, income earned from employee stock option plans so this will be deferred means this will be delayed for 5 years now or till employee leaves the company or when they sell their shares whichever is earliest so this is announced so esop is actually a significant component of compensation and during formative years, startups take up this route to attract and retain talent. So currently, ESOPs are taxable. But now, it will be taxed after 5 years as you can see. Or when the employee leaves the company or when they sell their shares. And this is, FM proposes a set of reforms to deepen bond market. So, as we discussed about, two foreign portfolio investors have been allowed to raise FPI's uh, Corporate bonds investment limit has been increased. That is from, as we saw, from 9% to 15%. And then another thing is, non-resident investors have also been allowed to buy select government securities, government bonds. So corporate bonds also will get more money and even government bonds will get more investors. Then on page 6, you have this coverage on how real and nominal GDP growth has been pairing over the years. So here you can see real GDP. Real GDP means GDP as it is with inflation. So inflation takes place over the years. So how it has been faring you know, in real terms is shown here. So here you can see the percentage. So it is presently near 5%. You can see. And then you have nominal GDP. Nominal GDP is GDP adjusted for inflation because you want to compare previous years with present year. So you will have to do it based on uh, uh, you know, taking care of inflation. So inflationary aspect should be excluded. So after adjusting GDP for inflation, when you see it gives you nominal GDP and you can see nominal GDP was near minus 5% earlier and now going up and down finally it has come back to minus 5%. So that is there. And this is government bites the fiscal deficit bullet. So it has set in motion a trigger mechanism for deviation. And target for the next year for fiscal deficit is at 3.5% of GDP. So the government has decided. Now you can see uh, taxation collections have been low. Growth has been slowing. Economy has been slowing. So fiscal deficit can go up to 3.8% of GDP for current financial year. And for next year, it will be at 3.5%. So earlier it was, previous budget said that GDP should be at 3.3%. But here the GDP has, target has been raised now to 3.5%. Sorry, fiscal deficit target. So fiscal deficit you should understand because the government always in a budget has deficit. Means you know, spending is more than you know, money which is coming in. Receipts, receipts are less, expenditure is more. So to balance government has to borrow so these borrowing requirements of the government what percentage borrowing requirement is there that is what fiscal deficit signifies so that borrowing requirement should be as low as possible so that's why fiscal deficit is proposed to be as low as possible so the proposals have been over the years to bring it down but now since the government is not able to you know, garner enough from taxation so it is planning to increase the fiscal deficit target and lower it next year then then revenue from telecoms double to 1.33 lakh crore as such is what the central government expects that revenues will double here so there will be increased license fee has also been increased spectrum, spectrum usage charges has been increased so that will result in more money coming to the government and it expects revenue from telecom to double here is the breakup of the budget expenditure for financial year 2020-21. So here you can see this major chunk is in interest payments. So government borrows over the years. So it has to pay interest on that too. So interest on borrowings make a major chunk of expenditure. Then comes defense expenditure. Then you have here you can see pension. And this interest payment is apart from pensions. Pension, transfer to sales, you know, uh, tra transfer to states. So, state governments also get a share and you can see transport, agriculture, 
the percentage expenditure on each issue. And this is logistics policy to be released soon. So national logistics policy will clarify the roles of union government, state governments and key regulators. So this will be released soon as is what uh, finance minister announced. So she said policy would cre create a single window e-logistic market and focus on generation of employment and skills that make MSMEs, micro, small and medium enterprises competitive. So it is said India's logistics sector is highly fragmented. And aim is to reduce the logistics cost, which is presently at 14% of GDP to less than 10% by 2022. And this is micro, small and medium enterprises turnover limit for audit increase. So in a major relief to small retailers, traders and shopkeepers, you know, forming small, micro, small and medium enterprises, the budget has proposed to raise by five times the turnover threshold for audit. So it was presently at one crore. So now it has been increased to five crores. So, turnover limit when audit will be required it has been increased. So, it will, and also this 5% uh, uh, 5 crore as such. So, this will apply only to businesses that carry out less than 5% of transactions in cash. So, audit will not be required if you carry out less than 5% of transactions in cash. And here you have, so it is again digitization which is being pushed here through MSMEs. And this is no substantial gain likely from AGRDs. So industry players are in dialogue with the government. The telecom sector is, uh, has been given a setback because of this adjusted gross revenue requirements which the government is claiming. So this is, a issue, this is this issue being covered here. So industry players means telecom uh, sector people say that uh, no substantial gain will be likely from these views. And on page 7, again, you have this coverage on fiscal deficit. So, here you can see over the last few quarters, you can see from April to November. So, it's not a quarter, it's actually from the period of April to November, if you look at fiscal deficit. So, how much is it projected and how much is the actual fiscal deficit? So, 15, 16, 16, 17, we kept it low, but 17, 18, we exceeded the fiscal deficit projected and same continues now and it has been increasing then below you have private players allowed to set up data parks so finance minister has announced in the budget an allocation of 6000 crores under bharat net program to enhance broadband connectivity in rural areas and proposes a new policy to allow private players to set up data parks in the country so here is the detail given you can see she says our vision is that all institutions at panchayat level such as Anganwadis and PDS outlets get digital connectivity. So fiber to the home connections through BharatNet will link 1 lakh gram panchayats in 2020-21 is what the budget proposes. Then this is a boost for technical textiles. So finance minister has announced in the budget national technical textiles mission. So, it is expected to give a thrust to production of wide variety of textiles used in sectors such as healthcare, infrastructure, automobiles, defense and agriculture. So, this is 1480 crore mission to be implemented from 2020-21 to 2023-24. So, it wants to make India as a global leader in technical textiles. So, what are these technical textiles you should understand? So, you know, these are textiles which are used uh, you know, uh, for various purposes. So here you can see this is textile materials which are used primarily for their technical performance rather than their aesthetic or decorative characteristics. So generally technical textiles are non-woven textiles. So here you can see the further detail being given. You can see. So e-textiles are also a new, new section. Interactive electronic textiles. So they are used in various sectors like agriculture, building, etc. So here you can see like water repellent material is made, textile material is made, wrinkle resistant material being made, UV blocking, you know, you know and antibacterial odor control, sensors using you know, material made with sensors or with optical display, etc. So these are called technical textiles. So what the budget proposes? is having a national mission for this to boost India and make India as a global leader.
in technical textiles. Then this is major cut in financial allocation for Nepal. So union budget every year makes a financial assistance allocation for Nepal and other African countries also. So that has been reduced this year, you can see. And it's a substantial cut. It will receive uh, 120 crores now as such compared to uh, last year's allocation of 150 crores and the other, other developing countries also. In Nepal, it would receive... Uh, you can see 800 crores as compared to 1200 crores earlier. And 100 airports to be developed by 2025 for Oran scheme. So, Finance Ministry has announced 100 more airports to be developed. So, this is a regional connectivity scheme. 1.7 lakh crore has been provided for transport infrastructure for the year 2020 21. So, 150 trains would run under public private partnership mode. Four stations would be redeveloped with the help of private sector. And Tejas type trains, as we saw on the front page also, to connect tourist destinations have been proposed. Also, proposal for setting up large solar power capacity alongside rail tracks is under consideration. On page 8, here you have this coverage on uh, the you know gross value addition across sectors like agriculture, mining, manufacturing. So, it is compared to financial year 2019 and you know, in 2020 it is said manufacturing and construction sectors fell the most. Only public administration and defense services mostly fueled by government grew robustly. So, this is a gross value addition in each sector shown. And then this is Green signal for more private trains. So, budget promises increased investment for passenger amenities and safety related works and also track renewal for trains. So, as we announced, budget allocation of 70,000 crores for Indian railways with overall capital expenditure of 1.61 lakh crores for the next financial year. So, capital expenditure saw an increase of near 3%, but budget promises increased investment for passenger amenities through. PPP, Public Private Partnership. Then this is powering India with a 22,000 crore push. So, renewable energy has been given top priority under the budget and it will be provided with an, it has been provided with an allocation of 22,000 crore. So, this is to improve the health of the financial, uh, of the power distribution firms and boost the use of solar power. And uh, this is regarding capital expenditure of railways. So, how much capital expenditure railways does? It says railways has become increasingly dependent on budgetary support in recent years because revenue from passenger and freight traffic has dwindled. So, you can see railways share of capital expenditure has seen a marginal fall in the budget. And this is operation operating ratio of railways. So, it was second lowest since financial year 2009. So, operating ratio near 100 percent basically means it is uh, uh, it is not making any profits. So, operating ratio of railways, it is marginally better in financial year 2019 compared to 18. So you can see it was near 90 percent. So, that means uh, of all the money, uh, 100 percent, 100 paise or 1 rupee being earned, 90 goes in operations, 90 percent goes in operations. And this has been falling, though it has been tried to bring brought up, but over the last few years it has fallen drastically and now it is at a low. The operating ratio is falling. Marginally better than last year, but still it is lowest. Lowest since financial year 2009. And this is regarding share of internal resources, how they fell. So, gross budgetary support, internal resources is going down. So, extra budgetary support and gross budgetary support is required. And this is regarding what is improving railways performance as such. You know, number of passengers, etc. So, you can see all are in the negative. And this is regarding defense expenditure. So, defense expenditure as such has also been brought down drastically, you can see. You can see low outlay to hit military upgrade. So, defense funds, if defense expenditure, defense funds are not provided, they don't cover for inflation, then, you know, the, they are meager 
given recent mega acquisitions which are proposed. So, defense outlay is not enough is what is being said. And this will affect military upgradation. And this is Home Ministry shares up on Jammu and Kashmir Ladakh funds. So, Indian Home Ministry has been allocated 1,67,250 crores for the budget 2020 uh, as against 1,19,025 crores. So, this major jump is due to creation of a separate fund for the new union territories of Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh. And this is allocation up for highways. So, road transport and highways ministry have seen an increase of 10% in its budget reallocation. But this is due to, uh, this large chunk of it is through monetization of rail, national highways by National Highway Authority of India. That is just, these national highways are being proposed to be monetized. So, here you can see ministry has announced even for uh, ports. It says one major port would be corporatized and then listed on the stock exchange. On page 9, you have this coverage on number of people in salaried employment, how it has remained stagnant in the last few years. So you can see this is salaried employees. This is self-employed entrepreneurs increasing and businessmen, you know, that also has fallen and reached, but it is also stagnant in a way. So, here you have then coverage on Beti Padhao scheme. So, finance minister's claim is that on the special initiative for girl child as such has been successful. So, she announced that Beti Bachao Beti Padhao scheme has led, uh, you know, has increased cross enrollment ratio of girls, girls. So, it is higher than that of boys. So, this is what she says. And here you have rural concerns. So, how rural wages are on a decline, consumption is falling. So, budget cuts in schemes such as MGNREGS. So, this will further increase the crisis because MGNREGS uh, allocation is not sufficient. And most rural assistance recorded poor allocations. So, here you can see how much has been provided for various schemes for rural areas over the years. So, you can see. MGRI spending as a percentage of total expenditure has decreased from 2.63% to 2.02%. Here you have rail flight services to transport farm produce. So, finance minister has announced Kisan Rail program. So, the target is to raise agricultural credit by 11% to 15 lakh crores. So, special rail and flight services to transport farm produce is part of a 16-point action plan for agriculture sector which has been announced in the budget. So, this is there. so agriculture, irrigation and allied activities will be given a boost. And this is food subsidy bill sees marginal hike. So, budget pro increases outlay for food subsidy uh, by a marginal 0.24%. So, this is for public distribution system, even fuel and fertilizer support is provided. Subsidies are provided in these sectors. So, allocation here is given for them. And this is cheer for science as key departments get a raise. So, allocation has been increased by 13% more than what was spent last year. For uh, Department of Biotechnology, you can see it's a 17% increase. Department of Science and Technology saw 14% increase in a location. So, even biotechnology gets the largest hike at 17 percent. And this is gender budget sees a drop. So, gender budget of the government as a share of budget has been declined, has declined uh, by uh, 0.01 percent this year. So, from 4.72 percent last year it has become now 4.71 percent. So, this is a gender budgeting basically means allocations for women centric programs. So, that is there. So, you can see this is like Ministry of Women and Child Development. Its allocation has increased 14 percent, increased by 14 percent, and 92 percent increase is also there for one stop centers for women in distress. Then, here you can see even for adolescent out of school girls, 
a scheme has been announced so you know, work for working women who are sex worker but if you look at overall scenario then gender budget allocation is 0.01% less then this is coverage on uh, non performing assets also various sectors and their gross non performing assets in agriculture you know, priority non priority sectors so allocation for mg and regs as we saw it has been slashed it has been slashed by 9500 crores so the scheme will now get 61500 crores in 2020 21 which is 19% less than last year last year's revised estimate was 71000 crores And here you can see this is regarding subsidies. So biggest fall in share of subsidies has happened now. Uh, at, uh, since financial year 2016-17, subsidies have reduced significantly. And this is the breakdown in subsidies. Subsidies for food, fertilizer, petroleum, interest, interest subsidy and others. Then this is spending on space to go up. So outlay for Department of Space has been increased. It, has, it is at 13,479 crore. And Chandrayaan 3 has been announced as such we know. Gaganyaan has been announced. So allocation for space is also up by 8%. And this is to promote tourism, more funding for museums. So 3,150 crore has been given for maritime museums in the budget. So this is to promote tourism. And here you have healthcare in focus with 69,000 crore outlay. So budget has announced 69,000 crore for uh, for healthcare. So you can see here uh, uh, there are schemes like Ayushman Bharat scheme. Then you have Pradhan Mantri Jan Arogya Yojana. Then Jan Aushadhi Kendra scheme. So all these have been given allocations. And as such, under Ministry of Health as well as under Ministry of Ayush. And this is SOPS to retire thermal plants. So, budget proposal aims to ensure cleaner air in cities. So, retire, uh, if you retire thermal plants, thermal power plants that are old and their carbon emission levels are high, then there will be incentives provided under the budget. So, those were the important provisions in the budget. And now these are views given on the budget. And here you have chief election commissioner panel members will have to pay income tax on perks. So center has decided to withdraw income tax exemptions extended to chief election commissioners and to other election commissioners on the value of their rent free residences, conveyance facilities, sumptuary allowance and medical facilities. And this will apply even to, means income tax uh, will be applied even to UPSC chairman and members. So this is that. Then on the editorial page, the first editorial is no fireworks. So it says whether the budget flies or falls flat will depend on its ability to fuel growth. So if budget can bring in growth, spur the economy, then it's good, otherwise it's not. So we'll have to wait and watch on that. The lead article also talks of uh, the budget exercise. It says this is a bereft of macroeconomic vision. So it says government has been unable to raise its spending at a time when circumstances demand a proactive fiscal policy. So no such announcements have taken place. Rather, MG and REG has seen fall in allocation. And this is a budget for the middle class. So higher personal tax rates and slabs have been modified to benefit the middle class boosting consumer demand is what they say because the taxation slab under the new regime are there which are at a lower rate but then they will have no exemptions and deductions so here again this is regarding budget only both views counter views given on page 18 you have 324 passengers from wuhan have been flown into india so these are indians from china and they are being quarantined they have come on a special air india flight and have been shifted to special camps and six indian students were prevented from boarding this special evacuation flight from wuhan after their body temperatures were found to be higher so three of them were minors so in this passengers who have come back
then on page 19 you have government ready to talk with Shinebag protesters. So NTCA protests are taking place in Shinebag in Delhi and now first such offer has been made by a union minister, the union law minister Ravi Shankar Prasad, the government is ready to talk with the protesters. We had seen even in the European Union the legislation which was the resolution which was proposed spoke on government should engage with the protesters, initiate talks. So that would be done now. On international page you have, again this is regarding uh, the new coronavirus, so China faces more border curbs, so flights have been cancelled, so that is fine, we know about it. This is Britain embarks on a future outside the European Union, so Brexit has taken place on 31st Jan, so there are celebrations and tears as UK bids goodbye. So again this has been covered, we don't need it. And this is Palestinians have cut security ties with US and Israel, so at Arab foreign ministers meet. The peace plan as such, West Asia peace plan of Donald Trump has been rejected by Arab foreign ministers as such. And uh, this is Mahmoud Abbas of Palestinian Authority. He said that security ties with US and Israel have been cut. So that is also evident after the West Asia peace plan which has been of Trump which has been pro-Israel. And this is important. After over three years, Maldives rejoins Commonwealth. So the island nation Maldives was reinstated after it followed a sustained reform process. Maldives had quit a commonwealth because of mounting criticism of its human rights record at that time. So it was in 2016 it pulled out uh, terming unjust the grouping's decision to penalize the country over former president Mohammad Nasheed's controversial ouster in 2003. But now the government has changed in Maldives and it has rejoined commonwealth. So that is it. Then this Trump impeachment trial is going on and news continues. That is not important once you know what is it and the final solution for the final result what happens in the impeachment process will be seen. So these are the important headlines. For detailed coverage of current affairs you can visit our website asia.com. Thank you.